So last week, I received an email that I found quite moving. So I would like to share it with you. So the email came from Nalanda Monastery in France. Um, for those who don't know, this is a monastery that started about the 1980s, early 80s. Venerable Children and I know it very well because <laughs> we were both living in Dorji Pamo uh, nunnery, which was nearby at the time that both of these um, monastic communities were developing. And in recent years, um, this monastery has really grown and transformed. Um, I'm not sure how many monks live there at the moment, maybe 30, but it's growing all the time. And they have a wonderful study program. They have two uh, resident Tibetan geshis and one English geshi. And lots of teachings, lots of programs. Lay students can come from outside. And there's some nuns living in the area as well. Anyway, so that's where the email came from. And the email is actually an obituary. <clears throat> so it starts saying, um, we are saddened to share the news that on the evening of July the 6th, which was the Dalai Lama's birthday, the fully ordained monk, Venerable Lopsang Tsotram, passed away at Nalanda Monastery after a heroic, stoic battle against cancer. So it starts off very sad, but it's a beautiful email, and I don't think... I ever met this monk. I may have seen him at events, but he's not somebody that I know. And yet, after reading this email, I felt like I did know him and felt close to him and felt a lot of joy, rejoicing in what he had done. So, um, Venerable Losang Sultram was originally from Italy. His uh, former name was Luciano Spallarossa. I think that's probably how you say it. <laughs> and he was born in um, northern Italy during the Second World War. So I figure he must have been in his mid to late 70s. And it, and it says he was very Italian. He loved Italian food, Vespas. I think those are those little scooters that everybody runs around on. <laughs> and bicycles. Well, there was a photo of him um, repairing a bicycle um, with kind of dirty work clothes, but a great big smile on his face. <clears throat> and before coming to Nalanda, he had a very full life. Um, for example, one of the things he did was he worked as an artisan ceramicist in Paris. He did a lot of traveling and also worked as a volunteer at Lama Tsongkhapa Institute in Italy. So it didn't mention when he met the Dharma, where, how, and so on. It only said that he came to Nalanda in 2002. He became a novice monk in 2006, and then received full ordination, bhikshu ordination, from His Holiness the Dalai Lama in 2008. So the email continues. Um, Venerable Sultram took readily to monastic life, harmoniously balancing between study, practice, and service. He studied three basic programs. So that's quite amazing because the basic program, this is an FPMT study program. It usually takes about five years to complete, and it includes... Um, uh, the middle length Lam Rim of uh, Lama Tsongkhapa, Shanti Deva's Guide to the Bodhisattva's Way of Life, uh, Wheel of Sharp Weapons, plus Low Rig, where you learn all about the mind and mental factors, Tenets, you learn the different philosophical schools and their views, and also the first chapter of Uttara, Uttara Tantra by Maitreya, which talks about Buddha nature. So there's quite a few different topics. Some are more philosophical, some are very practical, like the Lam Rim and, and Shanti Deva and so on. So doing that three times, that's quite a lot. <clears throat> and then it goes on. He watched his mind developing his qualities as a monk within the community. His artisan skills were invaluable 
in developing Nalanda's art workshop. The last object he worked on was a statue of a thousand-armed Chenrezig. And the email also says he was a wonderful teacher in the workshop because he knew a lot about materials and processes and techniques. And so many volunteers uh, in the workshop learned a great deal from him. And then it goes on to say, he had no close friends, yet all were his friends. All felt at ease in his presence. This shows his remarkable equanimity and loving kindness. He had a profound influence on ordained and lay people alike, being a model of a monk, inspiring many to choose ordination and a monastic life. So that's a wonderful uh, contribution. He was quiet about his knowledge. He did his best to contemplate and implement what he learned. He took the teachings as personal instructions. Venerable Tultrum was kind, generous, humble, wise, and lovable. During his last days, he said he was happy to be in Nalanda, being well taken care of by the monks. He said he would not have received such care anywhere else. And the email ends saying, We are grateful and privileged to have known and lived together with Venerable Tsultram, an exceptional Western Buddhist monk. So I'm not quite sure why I was so touched by this email. On the one hand, it's sad that he passed away, and he wasn't that old. But on the other hand, um, it's really wonderful and rejoiceful that although he started off his life in a difficult situation, born in the midst of a terrible war, he survived that and went on to have very rich experiences in his life, and then eventually found Buddhism. And he must have been so touched by the Buddha's teachings that he decided to commit himself to a monastic life, and then spent about the last 19 years of his life living in a monastery and making all these contributions. Also, it sounds like he was content to be a simple Buddhist monk, like the Dalai Lama always says. It doesn't sound like he was a world-renowned scholar or author or teacher or a yogi who went into a cave and attained high realizations. So he lived a simple monastic life. He was sincere in keeping his vows he learned and practiced the Buddha's teachings to the best of his ability, and he offered his skills to the monastery. And he was very kind and compassionate and helpful to everyone who lived in the monastery or who visited the monastery. So I feel there's a lot to rejoice in in his life. And it makes me think of the Abbey and how at some point we will start writing similar emails about monastics who came here and stayed here for many years, or maybe many decades, and devoted themselves to the study and practice of Buddhism and monasticism, and were dedicated to the activities of the Abbey, and who were much loved and appreciated and cared for by Abbey residents and visitors. So that doesn't mean we should think, oh, I better behave myself so they will write a nice obituary for me when I die. I mean, of course, we should try to behave ourselves, but not for that reason. <laughs> and instead, I think we can just be encouraged and inspired knowing that the things that we do, do make a difference. Um, starting with just the everyday activities we do, like showing up for morning and evening meditation, helping with cooking, and washing the dishes, cleaning the abbey and all the way up to helping out with a teaching program and publishing books. So all the things that we do here do have an impact. And even though it may be very subtle, it may not be something visible we can see with our eyes, but it does have an effect on the people who live here at the Abbey and also those who visit the Abbey and who connect with the Abbey online and so on. And that the things we do are a source of inspiration for all these people in their life and their practice.
So I do hope you find this story of uh, Venerable Losan Sultram as moving and inspiring as I did and can rejoice in his life, his accomplishments, his contributions. Thank you.